So this is going to be the first video of the second section of the beginner multiplayer C++ series. So what we're going to be doing in this one is creating a door and that door is going to have the functionality of being replicated across the network. We're going to discuss the different ways you can do this as well as the benefits and drawbacks of certain ways such as comparing a multicast to an on rep and why for something like this an on rep is superior whereas before with our projectile we probably would have wanted to do something such as a multicast instead so i will get into why all that is when we actually dive into it but what we're going to be doing in this video is creating our door class and importing everything and all that kind of stuff and give a very brief overview of what's to come in the next video and the reason I'm going to be going over multicast and on reps again is because I want to go over relevancy and ownership which was something that I couldn't really cover very well in the previous section because all of our code was inside of the character with our code being inside of the actor now our door class that will allow me to discuss other things such as ownership so that's what we're going to be focusing on so first things first in the description there's going to be a link to download a file which is going to be called tutorial door it might have a name or a little number before it that's to indicate what video it's for but anyways you're going to have this compressed document if you open that up and extract it you'll find a folder called tutorial door that contains the mesh and the animations for closing and opening. We're going to go ahead and import those. So just in the content folder, just drag and drop tutorial door. Why can I not click import? All right, maybe we have to import the mesh first. So let's import the door first. I'll create a folder called tutorial door. Open that up, drag and drop the mesh. There we go. And click import. And here we have everything that we need. Now let's right, well, drag and drop our animations folder in here. Under skeleton, we're going to choose door underscore skeleton and import. And do this, I meant to hit import all, but import the next one if you did what I did. Okay. Now we have our opening and closing animations for the door. So now we just need to set up our materials real, real quick. So it already comes with two materials. You can just delete those. And what we need to do is include the starter content. That'll also contain the door along with its materials and the door frame. And that's actually where I got this from. I just exported it, created the animations. So to import the starter content, we go here to add new, add feature or content pack, content packs, starter content, add to project. And that'll take maybe a minute depending on your system and you're good to go. You have this folder. If it fails or you do not have that option, what you need to do is open your Epic's Game Launcher, assuming you're using the launcher version, go to your installed um, engine directory, drop down box options and make sure starter content is checked and then relaunch the editor and redo it so anyways inside of starter content we have materials we should have one relating to door so we have m underscore glass and there was also another one i thought but we can just see so if we go to props here's our door so props, materials, m underscore door, and m underscore glass. So let's go back to our tutorial door, open it up. Asset details, we're going to select m underscore door. And for the other one, we're going to do m underscore glass, like so. I'm going to compile the shaders since I haven't actually uh, used these before, but we're going to go ahead and hit save close down the static mesh door and I'm going to leave this one open for now so we can see the result. Next up we're going to go to C++ classes 
we get our multiplayer and we're going to create a new class and I want to store this in a folder to keep it cleaner and organized so I'm going to right click new C++ class work we're going to create is an actor now usually stuff that is derived from the actor class is stuff that is meant to be set up for replication so for example if you see a pawn a actor a character the stuff that has a before it usually indicates that it's derived from the actor class and that means it's set up for replication or to have the uh, replication functionality already there so we're going to select actor hit next i'm going to check public so if we watch down here the header and source file are in the exact same folder but if i select public it puts the header file in a folder called public and the cpp file in a folder called private and that's what we want so next up i want to put it inside of a folder so it's going to be public forward slash well actually better yet um no we're not going to worry about that we can just leave it right inside of public so let's give this actor a name called door and then press enter to create the class now again this might take a little bit but once it does it should hopefully reload our uh, hit reload all and it'll restart our or reload our project literally as it states and we'll have these two folders public and private containing our new class next up I'm just going to wait for this to finish so I can close it oh it's taken a while so now let's just continue setting up our door class so first things first I do not want this actor to tick we do not need this tick function to run at all so literally as it states this tick function is called every frame we do not need that so we're going to remove our tick function and set primary actor dot p can ever tick equals false next up door dot h remove our tick function like so and we are good so i'm going to go ahead and start the compile yeah, i figured how reload would fail again Oh, and there's our door so the uh, materials are loaded correctly so I'm going to restart the editor save it this already compiled uh, I'm not going to reload it just yet but what we want to do is also add a skeletal mesh component to this door so that door asset that we just imported along with its animations that's what we want to be able to play well see and be able to play so we're gonna have to import three things so first off we're gonna do U property just going to be uh, uh what is it we're just, well, for now we're just going to do edit anywhere we don't really care about any of these other specifications we just want to go ahead and just set everything up we're going to do we're going to for declared so class u skeletal mesh component i'm going to call this one door mesh then we want to add an animation asset for animations I think it's just you and an asset asset I want to see if that comes up Let's see maybe it was an animation sequence let me double check real quick I should be using it in the mystery box oh you animation asset that was close so we're going to do another u property edit anywhere this one's just going to be we're going to forward declare it class u animation asset i'm going to call it open animation we're going to do the exact same thing again but call it close animation next up we're going to go ahead and set up our door mesh so if we head over to our .cpp in our constructor here we're going to do door mesh equals create default sub object u skeletal mesh component we're going to call it skeletal mesh component and the only thing we need to do now is just create or well, include the skeletal mesh component header file so that's just simply include 
components, skeletal mesh component, and that's literally it. So for the most part, we are about done. I do want to set up some basic opening and closing functions. And yeah, we'll go from there. So I want to create a public section. I'm going to do void toggle door. And this is going to either open it or close it depending on its current state. So I'm going to create that implementation. I head back to the header file. I'm also going to have a control boolean. So I'm going to do bool b door is or b door open. And by default, this is going to be false. And then in our toggle door, the only thing I'm going to do is b door open equals the opposite of b door open. So when this function is called, if b door open is true, this right here will set it to false. If this is false, this right here will set it to true. So it's equaling the opposite of itself, allowing us to easily just toggle. So we, right now we don't have any way to call this. We're going to be using a simple line trace here in the uh, nearby future or well, in the next video when we actually start implementing this. But yeah, that's uh, roughly how we're going to set it up. We would just want to do one more thing and go ahead and set it ready to play our animations. So in our toggle door function, we're going to do if b door open and uh, what do you call it and close animation is valid then we want to play our close animation else if b door open is false and open animation we want to play the open animation so to play our animations we're just going to simply do door mesh, play animation, close animation, and pass in false for looping because we do not want it to loop. We just want it to play once. Then we're going to do the exact same thing, except we're going to play open animation. And that's all we're going to do. So now we're just going to go ahead and go to where we created our door. So public. So C++ classes, beginner multiplayer, public. Here's our door. We're going to right click, create a blueprint class based on door. I'm going to put it right inside of tutorial door and name it BP underscore door. So it is right here. And I'm going to actually right click, make a new folder, call it mesh, and throw the door, door physics asset, and the skeleton inside of there. So we're just left with that. So inside of our BP door, we have our door mesh. We can go down here where it says skeletal mesh, select our door, like so. Then click on the BP door, just the open uh, directory area. We have our animations. We have a door close and a door open. Open animations corresponds to open. Close animation corresponds to close. Compile and save. And now, for the most part, our door is ready to be used. So how long have we been going? 13 minutes. OK. So we're going to go ahead and set this up real quick inside of the world. So I'm going to place the door down. I go into Start a Content, Props, and just drag out the door frame 2. And try to just place it right in the uh, there I gotta go to lower that amount right like so so the door is placed right in the middle and I don't remember which direction it's going to open but it ultimately it shouldn't really matter just gonna look at the physics asset make sure it has okay that is ugly but that'll work for coll and that might not actually work for collision what I mean by that is if I walk into it as you can see it's a uh, well, actually, it might. Let me see if I can even walk through the door frame. Okay, I cannot walk through the door frame, so we're going to forget the door frame. 
Instead, we're just going to work on our door. And right now we have no collisions on the door. Let's look at our blueprint. So that might be something to fix in a nearby uh, video. Just scroll down to collision. Collision preset is no collision. We're going to select it to block all. Compile and save. And walk into it again. As you can see now, the collision is a you can see how I'm walking around, it's a big giant sphere. So I'm not even close to the door. So we need to fix that. So we're going to go to our mesh, open up our physics asset. We're going to click on bone, right click, add shape, box. As you can see, the box has been added down there. So I want to delete the sphere that was just created. And we're going to use just the box. So I'm going to press R to scale. I'm going to scale this guy up, move it roughly into position, make it skinnier, make it tall, oops, wrong direction, make it taller. I'm going to go into a front perspective and just get it to line up pretty close. Okay, so now we have our collision about the same as our actual door. So I'm going to hit save and now walk into it. As you can see, now it's shaped just like the door. And that's what we want. So that's good. For the most part, that's kind of trippy. You can see the reflection. That's interesting. For the most part, we are set up and good to go. The only thing we're going to have to do is just add the functionality to actually toggle the door, so have a way to interact with the door from our character. And that's what we're going to be doing in the next video. That'll be a very, very quick one because I just want to, I don't want these to be obsessively long when we're just setting stuff up. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and end it here. But currently, if we do have a way to talk call toggle door, it will, the, I can tell you right now, this will by default work in single player. It'll play the animation and do what it needs to do. However, it is not set up to be replicated. It will only be seen by the person who triggers that function. So anyways, uh, as usual, if you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, feel free to check out my Patreon that is linked in the description below. And if you have any questions or anything like that, you can also find a link to my Discord server down there as well. You will be able to have, like I said before, there's also going to be the download for the store asset and the animations and all that kind of stuff uh, in the description. So feel free to download if you want to follow along. As always, I will see you in the next one. Take care.